Hey guys, Jessica here with Home Sweet Farmhouse, and today we are talking about minimizing our wardrobe. So, it's probably been like six or eight months since I did a closet declutter video, and at that time, my husband and I both went through literally every piece of clothing we had. He didn't get rid of quite as much, but we wound up donating four huge trash bags full of clothes. And I was really proud that I actually had more. In addition to those four huge bags of clothes that we donated, I also had a really huge box full of bags and dresses and just nicer items that I sent off to thread up. So we got rid of a lot <laughs> back then. So it's been like six or eight months, which is plenty of time for me to have added in a few new pieces, and also to figure out what I'm actually wearing, what I'm not wearing, where my gaps are in my wardrobe. I've just recently decided that I really want to try to minimize my wardrobe. I am in no way a minimalist. I cannot call myself a minimalist. However, I am trying to simplify and pare down things that I have, things that I own, to make my life simpler. I don't know if you've ever looked in your closet and you have a closet full of clothing and thought, I have nothing to wear. I feel like this all the time, even since we decluttered and got rid of tons of clothes from our closet. I still feel like this pretty darn regularly because there are clothes that I just instinctively, like I just, I gravitate to, right? To wear every day and a lot that I don't. And I know this has been a really weird time in our lives. I know for me and plenty of others, maybe you too, loungewear and activewear have become a much bigger component of our wardrobe and I, like I pretty much live in leggings whereas I used to live in jeans. I love wearing jeans. Got to be honest with you, I don't have very many that fit really and in fact the ones that do fit me, I don't feel really good in like they don't fit me well. So I'm really going to take a good hard look at that. So in this video, we're going to start out with what do you do, right? When you want to start paring down your wardrobe, when you want to declutter your closet, what are the steps you need to take? Like, what should you be thinking about? And the very first thing we want to do is figure out what your style is. Now, this can be different. Like for me, I feel like I don't have one single style. If I had one overall theme to what I like to buy and what I like to wear is that I want to be comfortable. Like bottom line, hands down, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, actually, I want to be comfortable. And of course, there are occasions that we just don't have that luxury. For example, I just bought a dress. I actually bought two dresses. The second one's coming today for my sister's wedding. That's happening in June. And I don't love wearing dresses. I am not that comfortable in a dress, but I looked at the dresses that I had available in my closet and I didn't feel like I wanted to wear any of those to this particular occasion. And that's totally okay. The last time I bought a dress was almost two years ago for my grandmother's funeral. So, you know, dresses just are not something that I wear regularly, that I need regularly, and I do tend to buy them when I need them. So not keeping a ton of dresses is something that works for me. But if you go into an office every day and you need to dress nicer and you need to dress up, then maybe dresses take up more of your closet space and that's totally okay. We just need to figure out what we actually wear every day and what we need to have room for in our closet. What makes sense for us? For me, leggings are it and I want to see where I stand with my jeans because I really want to find, I'd love to have three, total, a total of three pair of jeans that I absolutely love to wear that fit well and are make me feel confident when I wear them. Two skinny jeans and one boot cut. That's what I would love to have. We'll see what I've got. Also, I just want to note that there is one category in my closet that I don't actually count towards like the clothing I have. I consider it more collectibles. I have Margaritaville t-shirts and I have concert t-shirts and those are more collectibles to me. I am not going to be paring those down. I keep those in my bottom drawers. I know where they are and if I want to wear one, great. I grab it and then wear it and wash it and put it right back <laughs> into one of those bottom drawers. For me, that is just something that is, is more of a collectible for me. But figure out what you need, right? Do you need dress clothes? Do you need 
more active wear? Do you, you know, spend a lot of time at the gym or is, uh, you know, working out part of your job? Are you a fitness instructor? Maybe you need a lot more active wear. Maybe you just need loungewear around the house, which I actually use um, a lot of active wear as loungewear around the house because I like the feel of a nice tight, like active wear legging. I don't tend to wear leggings in the traditional sense that like if you think about like a LuLaRoe, which was really popular a few years ago, those are like what I think of as a legging. I don't wear those as much as I wear like active wear yoga type pants. Those are my favorite. Those are what I gravitate to. And then I wear a lot of cardigans and sweaters because I am cold all the time. Another thing you want to do and it really helps to keep your closet decluttered is to separate like separate your seasons. So you may we're hitting into we're in spring now, we're hitting into summer. You may want to start putting your winter clothes away. That again, I have a really hard time with because of where we live. We live in San Diego and it can be you know, really cold in May and June. Like when you traditionally think that, you know, in the United States at least, we're having summer. It can be really cold here. And even so, I'm cold like all the time, all year round. So I even if I put on a tank top to go outside, to go in somewhere, I need a cardigan or something to put over top. So I don't have that like summer, winter clothing distinction. It doesn't work for me and I know that and that's okay. So what we want to do is first go through the clothes that we have. Last time in my declutter video, I literally pulled every single piece of clothing that I owned out and put it on my bed and I had didn't even have enough room on the bed. I was like piling things up alongside my bed. So if you're interested in that video, I will link it down below. I'm not going to be doing that this time. What I'm going to be doing is literally going through every section of my closet and I'm going to organize it in sections. So sweaters go together and long sleeve shirts go together and t-shirts go together. What I'm going to be doing, I, like I don't wear a ton of t-shirts. I, why do I have a ton of t-shirts? I'm really going to be paring that down a lot, but here's the bottom line. You know, you can use the Marie Kondo method. Does it bring you joy? I mean, I don't know. That may work for some people. I don't know that that's going to work for me. What my goal is every piece of clothing, left in my closet at the end of the day, I want it to be like a viable option for me every morning when I get up. And that is going to mean that it fits well, that I feel confident wearing it, that I feel it has a flattering fit, and most importantly, that it's comfortable. Granted, I will have a couple of pieces that may not be the most comfortable because I just need to have them for just in case, like dresses, but overall, it needs to fit well, I need to feel confident in it, and Comfort is a huge priority for me. So, you know, whatever your priorities are, figure those out and start tackling your closet. If you have pieces in your closet that you literally have not worn in a year or more, I would recommend getting rid of them, whether that means donating them or sending them to a place like ThreadUp or, or you know, listing them on Poshmark. That's completely up to you. And it's gonna depend on the piece as well, right? But you know, pass these along to someone else who can love them and use them. I think that's a really great tip. If it is no longer serving you, don't let it take up space in your home because when it takes up space in your home, it takes up space in your mind. And if something is not serving you and it's taking up space in your mind, you are giving up one of the most precious resources that you have. And that is your brain. That is your thought. That is your feelings and emotions because when our home is cluttered, we can't rest like that is just science has been scientifically proven our brains don't rest when we're constantly like being pulled here and there and here and there and here and there and that's not belong there our brains can't rest so i would encourage you to follow along with me and go through your closet and literally just pick out the things that don't fit you well, they're not serving you in this time in your life. And you know what? If you find some pieces in your closet that you really love and maybe they're just one size too small and you're gonna put forth effort to be able to fit into it again, grab yourself a small container and limit yourself to that container and say, whatever I put in this container is something that I absolutely love and I want to get back to being able to wear this. Put it up somewhere so that it's because it's not a viable option for you today right and when you hit your goal you reward yourself with grabbing that container and putting those clothes back in your closet because you loved them to begin with 
So I have another pile of stuff to get rid of and I also need to go try on all of my jeans to see what fits and what doesn't. And there was one shirt. Um, so I put my sweaters and sweatshirts back here. And these are my cardigans, which I told you I need. I'm always cold. These are like my layering long sleeve shirts. So like my flannel shirts here. I have a jean one too that I love. And then just a couple extra long sleeve shirts that I have. These are all my layering tanks. Um, and a couple of, well, just like I went to Cabo, Cabo Wabo Cantina. So tank tops that I have. And these are nicer, like dressier tanks that I have. Um, and nice, like dressier short sleeve shirts. And then my dressy long sleeve shirts are back here. So all my active wear, lounge wear, um, pants are in here. These are my pajamas. Um, some of them are in the dryer right now, actually. So I left that open in case I need to rearrange some of my pajamas. Yeah, and then again, my Margaritaville shirts. And these are all shirts from like concerts and places that I've been like Hard Rock or Antique Archaeology, places like that. Um, extra t-shirts, which I've did a pretty good job paring down last time, but you know, got all that to get rid of now. So let's get to it. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful. I hope the tips helped you out. I hope you take the time to start clearing out some clothes in your closet as well, because I really feel that you are going to feel so much better. You're going to be able to take a long, deep breath and know that every item that remains in your closet is a viable option for you every single morning and you're not going to get overwhelmed with all of the clothes in your closet now currently that are not a viable option for you i just think this is like the epitome of self-care is letting go of things that are not serving us right i feel like it's a very it's very materialistic right that we're getting rid of all these things and maybe you feel bad that you spent money on it but donate it somewhere, even like maybe a women's shelter or I don't know, you, you can look <laughs> at places you can donate in your area, but feel good about where you're sending it and know that somebody else is going to get to love that item. And really is the money you spent on it worth the brain power that you're having to use every single day looking at it in your closet going, oh, I spent money on that and I don't wear it. It's not worth it, right? Let's move on. And just start simplifying it like even the smallest step can make a huge difference and honestly it snowballs once you take that first small step it really snowballs and you want to do more and more and more which is why I'm here doing this video with you today I do hope all of the tips helped you thank you so much for being here I hope you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber thank you so much for being here with me today again um, if you think if you know anybody that this video or any other video on my channel can help someone that you know please share it with them my goal this year for 2021 is to get up to 1,000 subscribers and I can't do that without your help so thank you so much for being here i can't wait to see you in our oh, oh oh really quickly before i go you may not know this about me i'm also a pet parent coach so if you look at the link tree in my description there's a link to my link tree you can go to my other channel on youtube which is all about pets also you can go to my patreon where you get all new and exclusive pet parent content that i know you need so I hope you join me over there as well if you are a pet parent. I know so many of us are. And I want to say thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting me on YouTube. Thank you for supporting my other channel if you are a pet parent. And for supporting me on Patreon. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye.